Once upon a time, every citizen of Zimbabwe was a trillionaire, and yet they were among the poorest people in the world. It got so bad that laws were even passed that made it illegal to burn currency for warmth. So how is it that a people can have so much money and so little wealth? Let's take something as simple as going to the grocery store. When you go shopping, you probably have an idea of what you're looking for and how much you're gonna have to pay. Sure, one store might be having a sale that another isn't and prices may fluctuate some due to typical supply and demand issues, but overall, you can be confident that if a gallon of milk is $3 today, it's gonna be $3 tomorrow and next week from now. But for people like Isaiah Machiku, grocery shopping in Zimbabwe is a lot more complex, despite the fact that he walks into the store as a trillionaire. Isaiah and his wife have to go through an incredibly elaborate process when they shop at the grocery store. They have to start off at separate stores on the other side of town. They're constantly taking pictures of items and prices and comparing them in order to come to conclusions about what their family needs and what they can afford. This isn't because prices will drastically change from one week to the next. It's because prices will drastically change from the moment they take it off the shelf to make it up to the checkout counter. This is not because the supply and demand of milk or chicken, beans, or toilet paper is changing drastically, but rather because the government of Zimbabwe is engaging in hyperinflationary monetary policy. Put simply, they are printing money as fast as the printers will turn it out. And when you drastically increase the supply of paper money, you cause the value of the money to decrease. This is called inflation, and it works like a tax on savings. How bad is the inflation rate in Zimbabwe? Well, back in March of 2007, it was over 50% per month. By November of 2008, it was 79 billion 600 million percent per month. This led to a nation of trillionaires who were unable to even buy the most basic necessities for their families. Why would anyone or government engage in inflationary monetary policy? It's not as if we don't have ample evidence from ancient civilizations to the present on the destruction this kind of behavior causes. And it turns out that most leaders don't intend to hyperinflate their currency. In Zimbabwe, it started off with severely curtailing property rights and seizing almost all of the country's 4,500 commercial farms, which provided a significant portion of the nation's economic wealth. This seizure resulted in billions lost and around 700 companies closing, either as a result of direct seizure of their property or because investors fled the country with their wealth, fearful that they would be next. Ultimately, this produced a drop in over 10% in the country's GDP in just two years. And when so much revenue is lost practically overnight, it becomes very tempting to turn to the printing press in an effort to solve financial problems. As we look at what's happening in our own country with government spending taking place at breakneck speeds, it's starting to become apparent that something is going to have to give. We can't keep taxing more because that also hurts economic development. We can't simply keep borrowing it because at some point people will stop lending to you. So it's only a matter of time before people will be tempted to start using the printing press in order to feed the spending habits. And if you think that that sort of inflationary monetary policy can't happen here, well, I have a $1 trillion Zimbabwe note I would like to sell you. Thank you for joining us on The Why Minutes. I hope you'll go over to thewhyminutes.com and subscribe so you can get updates on our content that we put out weekly. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.